There it is. We are trying something new, so forgive us. Um, it's all trial and error with some of these things. So yeah. um, technology, a lot of times, is not my friend, but but I have to learn it, and so it is all trial and error. So we'll try it, and if it doesn't work, then we'll try something else. But anyway, I wanted to um, I wanted to sit with Trish today. Uh, Trisha has done an, an absolutely incredible job. It's not been easy, and it's not been wasn't she wasn't successful overnight. But she, over the past two years, has managed to lose about 60 pounds and, and keep it off and find a lifestyle that she's really happy with, that um, it's something that she can do for the rest of her life. And so I know with it being the new year and um, everybody's starting with their New Year's resolutions and you know I know I challenge my team with crazy cool goals and all of that kind of thing, I thought maybe uh, it would be great to bring Trisha on today so that she could share her weight loss journey, um, all of the things that she learned, the differences that she made in the mind shift basically that she made so that she can be you know, as successful as she is. And so um, we just, uh, I just thought that this would be really important, especially with it being at the beginning of the year. So um, thank you for being willing to come on and sure. and share your story. Because like I said, you know, it's something, I mean, I struggle with it too, but I think a lot of people struggle with it. Um, and, and they think that you can just start a diet on Monday and by Friday you lose 50 pounds and then you're done and that's it. And so I think the really important thing about this is that it has been, it's been a couple of years. I mean, it's been, it's been day in and day out for, for two years. Mm -hmm. It's not just been an overnight thing. So, um, so, so I want to go back, like you had Peyton mm -hmm. and right before you had Peyton, you had lost like 35 pounds. <laughs> I finally lost the baby weight from Brianna 12 years later <laughs> right? and then got pregnant with Peyton. Right. And so you got pregnant and so you were already successful. You knew how good you would feel and that kind of thing. And so, but the motivation was there for you to just take it a step further this time. So, um, you tried a whole bunch of things mm -hmm. and you, but you stumbled. I remember we were in Los Vegas yeah. and Peyton was, I don't know, three or four months old and you stumbled upon this podcast mm -hmm. and you started listening to this podcast and you're like, this chick knows her stuff. Yeah. Like she is, and she's this sassy blonde. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, Kim's right. We were in Vegas. Um, we were there for a hair show. So we were actually there about seven days and it was, um, Kim and uh, my kids and, uh, Seth, our mom, and then two team members also. And, um, yeah, I just started listening to podcasts and ended up finding this sassy blonde. Her name is Corinne Crabtree. Um, I, her podcast is called one losing 100 pounds with Corinne. Um, and then she's got a membership site also. And so I love the fact that she was blonde and that she was sassy and she cusses a lot. <laughs> um, and so, but it was really cool because her concept that she teaches is that you really have to be willing to live today how you want to live the rest of your life. And, and for forever, I've always had a weight issue. It was always up or down. And so if I was on a diet, then it always seemed like I had my weight kind of where it wanted. But once I got off the diet, then of course, um, it went, it fluctuated, it went back up. And uh, yeah, and so um, it was interesting because what you'd said about just mindset was just that it was different. So she teaches four basics um, that anyone can do. And I thought, I'm really going to give this a try. I'm going to, I'm going to really go all in and see what her four basics are and see if it works. So, so you talk about that. That was one of the things that I wanted to ask about is the four basics. So what is it, the, the four basics that she teaches? Cause it's not, you know, you get those keto diets where it's, you know, you only, you don't eat any carbs or, you know, you've got, it, it's really not a fad diet. So there, it is just four basics. And so share with the audience, those, what are those four basics? Um, she teaches, it's all about planning your day. So to plan out what you're going to eat that day, journaling, um, to be able to just get out of your head and to be able to get just thoughts out of your head, um, water, which is something that we teach with our hello, gorgeous women, that it's so imperative to drink your water. Um, and so they teach, I believe it's to drink 64 ounces at our natural doctor, Janine Kennedy, she teaches that it should be um, half, clean water of half of your body weight is what you should be getting in daily. Um, and then her last four is sleep. And so one of the things that you talk about, and, and so what you've done is with the planning, 
and the journaling is that you've been able to track things. And what you always say to me is it's just collecting data. So you've done a really great job of you write it down and you plan it. And if depending on whether you've had a weight loss or a weight gain that week, then you go back in and you're looking at your plan and it's, it's just all data. What I love about it is there's no emotion around it. It's just simply data. Right. If you, if you plan something and you don't eat exactly on your plan and you overeat, that you don't beat yourself up about it. It's just, okay, what happened? Why did I overeat so that I can better understand that going forward? Yeah. And so, but I, I love the whole thing about the data and the no emotion. So talk a little bit about, it, it really is this, it's more of a mental game with this particular journey that you've been on and that you've been successful at. It's not, I mean, it is what you put in your mouth. I, I love what Corinne always says, you know, when I listen to her podcast too, if you want to have a cheeseburger, have a cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. If you want to it, it, just make sure that you plan for it. It's the spontaneous stuff that you need to get rid of. And then, you know, if you do a cheeseburger and a large fries and a large Coke this week, the next week, level it up and do a cheeseburger and do a medium fry and a medium Coke. So it's not like a, a starvation mode by any no. sense of the word. There is no restrictions. No, there are no restrictions. None. Yeah. But you're exactly right. It's all about pre-planning it um, to get out of your head for so long. We were all taught carbs are bad. You know, bread is bad. You know, all these things that things are bad for you. And so what Corinne teaches is that food is not necessarily, like you said, there's no emotion to it. It's not good or bad, but it's that you plan what you have, but then also eat when you're hungry, stop when you're satisfied, not when you're so stuffed that you can't, you can't fill your belly anymore. Um, and again, part of that mental game, which was good for me was, um, I love it when she had a podcast where she's talking about the last supper your next meal is not your last supper. It's right. not the last supper. So you could have a cheeseburger again. It's really okay. You don't have to eat a whole pizza. You can have pizza tomorrow if you want. And so it's really getting into that of, okay, I can have that and I could eat it and enjoy it. But I can also say that was good and not good. For me, yes, the whole snacking thing, I found myself doing just that. I found that I was snacking in the morning and in the afternoon. And what she encourages is then to, if it, if you didn't plan it, um, you can do a thought download about it. You can just simply write down, why did I eat? Was I really hungry? And if so, then plan a snack tomorrow for that specific time frame. Is it that your brain is in a habit, which is most of the time it is, or it's emotional that you're eating because you're stressed or you're overwhelmed or you're happy, you know, you're doing, you're eating for all the other reasons besides just eating or um, just being hungry. Well, and she talks about eating to your two. So explain a little bit like what that is, like the, the whole, I know Uncle Dan always teases Sethi about just stick to 80%. Like you never want to be 100% full, but just stick to 80%, whatever that looks like, you're 80%. But she talks about a lot of times like eating to your two. So what is that? It's eating until you're satisfied. Eating until um, you, you're simply, you really had enough that your stomach has had enough not your brain. So one of the triggers that she encourages is when you're eating, number one, it, you shouldn't be distracted. You should actually be sitting somewhere eating and enjoying your food. Um, slow down when you're eating. That way you can consume it, which we know as a hairdresser years ago, we would eat so fast yes. just because we didn't have time, but yes. it takes time for your brain to catch up. So enjoy what you're eating. And then um, one of her little thought triggers is if she sighs, you know, like has a sigh, like, okay, or you provoke the question in your brain, have I had enough? And it could be, yes, I've had enough. There's three or four bites still left on my plate or two bites left on my plate. And maybe you grew up in a household where you were supposed to clean your plate. You don't have to do that anymore. It's really okay to leave those few, few bites behind and just say, yep, I am satisfied. Or you can leave it, um, which is what I did in the beginning. And I set a timer that, well, maybe I really, I don't know if I'm hungry or not because I don't want to eat a snack in two hours. I set a timer for five or 10 minutes. I left it. I walked away, went and did something else. I went back and then I decided, was I still hungry? If I was, I ate it. And if I wasn't, it was okay then to throw it away. I, I think the other thing that, that you've done really well too is that you have a very good relationship now with the scale. Totally. Um, because totally. you know, one of the things that she talks about is, is that the scale is not a person's right. You, you know, and, and so many of us, me included, I allow the scale to dictate my day. So if I get, it's like my hair, if I get on, and I'm having a good hair day, like all is right with the world. If I'm having a bad hair day, watch out. Cause it's not, 
the scale is the same thing. If I get on the scale and, and I've gained when I thought that I should be losing, I'm like in a bad mood all day long. And so, and, and you get mad at the scale because of that, where you've learned that, again, it's the whole data thing. Like literally the scale is just doing nothing but collecting data okay. and, and your weight's going to fluctuate every day. I, that's all there is to it. And it's never just going to go down because of hormonal and, you know, water weight and, and all the things it's not just going to stay, you know, it, it's never, it's not going to go down every day. It's going to go down and then it's going to go up. And so I loved the whole thing. You know, what she had taught about that is that the scale's not a person and there's no reason to get mad at it. It's just simply data it's just simply something to to gauge where you're at and you can't know how far you've come until you know where you've started that's right and so speak to more of that because you did a really great job of like tracking but you didn't really it didn't dictate you were just again it was just data and then you would sit down and you would analyze the data at the end of the week and say okay great i stayed the same or i'm up two pounds so what did i do this last week that caused my weight to go up two pounds. So speak to that a little bit. Yeah, no, you're right. It is just an object. The scale is just an object. And that's what it does. It gives you data. It allows you to know, did that work? Did that not work? And if it worked, great. Let's keep doing maybe those same things. And if it didn't work, okay, what can I do? Like you had said, to level up. Um, but that was a huge turning point for me um, that I, when I weighed myself now, it did not it didn't determine how I was going to feel about myself that day, that that number, it simply is just a number. I'm doing other things that I was able to say, okay, but I got my water in, but I got really good rest last night. I chose to eat my salad that had really great things on it yesterday versus what I didn't have planned. Or I chose to continue to eat. I had a sandwich plan for today. And even though my weight is up, by God, I'm having that sandwich today because it's okay. It really was just, it was a whole, it was a whole shift. It was just a whole shift. And I actually have to give kudos to my husband for that. Um, because when he was going through a weight loss plan through work last year, um, he would see how frustrated and how sad I would get when we would weigh in on Friday and I would be up three pounds or up a pound and he would be down five. He actually stopped celebrating his weight loss at that point because he didn't want me to feel bad mm -hmm. because I wasn't doing it and I wasn't feeling the effect. And so um, I listened to the podcast about, you know, she's got a great podcast. And so one was about the scale and really listened to it. But again, really decided, okay, I'm actually going to try this with no restrictions. I'm not going to have old crappy thoughts. What I've always thought, I'm actually going to try it this time. And so I just, every day I got on and I just wrote it down and I did that for the longest time. And it was simply just that it didn't matter what it said. Right. It was just collecting data, but it's nice because now I have that data to go back to, to say, you know, like for Christmas time, I decided I wanted to maintain. I wanted to have a few extra goodies. You know, our mom had some Polish coffee cake and you make Mike's noodles. And I didn't want to necessarily be in the process of wanting to lose right now. And again, that was really cool because that was my decision. I could either go through Christmas wanting to lose weight, wanting to maintain weight, or wanting to gain weight. That was, ah, it's all me. That's right. And so it was really nice that even with that, it was, there was no beating up on the scale. It was collecting data. And I was able to go back through my planner that I have. And on my dailies, I actually write down my four basics and I write down if I'm up or down and I write down what my goal is at the end of the week. And so it's nice to go back and see, okay, yep, great. This summer I kind of lost, but kind of maintained. Cool. But you know what? I've kept it off and I'm living every single day the way I want to live every single rest of my day of my life. Right. You know, the other thing we were talking last night, and I thought that this was really interesting too, about how, and, and she speaks to this in the podcast as well. It really is about being happy right where you are. Yes. It's not putting it off. It's not, you know, well, I'm going to go on that vacation once I lose 20 pounds or, you know, I, I'm going to sign up for whatever this class, but once I lose 20 pounds. You just really need to be happy where you are right now. And I know that there are a lot of people that, that you put it off and put it off and put it off and it becomes a stopper. Um, but, you know, we were talking last night over dinner and I loved what you had said was that, you know, you looked back on pictures and you were playing a game with Brianna and you were heavy at that point in time, but you were still loving life and you were still, you know, you were still having a good time and enjoying every day. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's part of it too, is that, this weight loss, and because of that, you've loved yourself no matter what. That's right. And so the weight loss hasn't changed you. It's not turned you into somebody else. But I think that it was because partially 
your success has been because you've start, you started in a good place. Mm -hmm. You loved where you were at that yeah. point in time. Yeah. You knew that losing the weight was only going to enhance that. That's right. But you also didn't put things off to say, well, I'm not going to do this until, you know, if you put it off until you lost 60 pounds, it, it would be two years in the making mm -hmm. where you just kept going but you loved where you were. And I know that that's what Corinne talks a lot about in her podcast too, is that you really just have to love where you are right now. You may not be where you want to be, but there's something. Maybe you like the way your hair looks. Maybe you like the way that you do your eyes. Maybe you've got shapely arms. Maybe that you've got great legs, whatever it is. But you know, as women, we have a tendency to focus on, you know, the bad stuff, right? And, and you, you see all the bad things where nobody else sees that. Like you see it, but but they look beyond that. And so I think that there's something to that of just about speaking to the point of you're, if you're not happy now where you are and you lose 60 pounds, you're not going to be any happier when you lose 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. You really need to find out what that inner working is so that you can be happy right now so that it, the, the, the weight loss is only going to enhance your happiness, but you're not waiting to get to that 60 pound weight loss in order for you to be happy. Right. Right. So oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. I, you're right. I, I've been, well, I'm always thinking I'm just a sexy blonde. <laughs> no matter what I am, you know, right. I gained 75 pounds with Brianna, with Peyton, I did not gain that much, but you know, and you're right. It just, it is a mindset. And I, I'm really grateful for the people that I have in my life that love me regardless, that love me for, you know, for who I am and, and that I've been able to love, you know, myself for that. And, uh, um, but yeah, but I really wanted to be healthy to be healthy. I yeah, wanted yeah, to yeah. lose weight to be healthy. Our Agreed. dad died of a massive heart attack, you know, years and years ago. And so that certainly it's, I, I know that heart disease runs on my side of the family and it was really imperative that I do what I could. And I really wanted to, with having Brianna, having a teenager, I really wanted to set really good examples for Brie, um, especially that you can have what you want eaten till you're satisfied. It, there does not have to be anything restrictive. There doesn't have to be. I really wanted to just have some really good, positive, extra positive, um, you know, habits for her. And so, so when times would get tough and you would go maybe a couple of weeks at a time and you wouldn't see any losses and, and maybe just a slight gain, what is it that you had to tell yourself to keep going? Um, it was definitely when my old crappy thoughts would come back into play that I really needed to stop. And I needed to go back and I needed to re-look at the weeks that I was having positive weight loss. What was going on? What was I doing? And for me, it was all about grab eating. Um, she calls it grab ass eating, but it was all about grab eating to where when I was making dinner, I would be snacking on something while I was doing that, or I was giving Peyton a snack. And even though I just picked Peyton and Brie up from our mom's house and I had a little bit of a snack over there, I nibbled on something there. I went home and I was feeding him something and I nibbled on something there. Or certainly the eight o'clock hour was kind of the hour where, well, that's the time that, you know, Dan and I are sitting down and watching something or hanging out. So why not have a snack? Why not have something to drink? Um, and really being able to go back and say, okay, that's what it is. Like I'm allowed to eat and drink anything I want, but where am I? It was almost, it was a self-sabotage, but not realizing it was a self-sabotage because it really just was, my brain was like, Hey, we like habits. This is what we want to do. This is what we're used to. So it was able to write down and say, okay, today we're going to do this. And if we need to have a snack, if we're super, super hungry and we need to have a snack, these are the things that we're going to snack on. And at eight o'clock, when I feel like I need to go to the pantry, cause that's what we've been doing lately. What else can I do for me? It was painting my nails. I went and got nail polish and I sat down and painted my nails because it was something active to be able to train my brain. And then the next day when it happened again, again, you evaluate it. But being able to just say, we're just going to keep trying this. We're going to keep trying and see what worked because when an old crappy thought comes in of, I can't do this, I'm up down 60 plus pounds. I did it and it's working and I didn't do anything stupid stupid in my mind. I didn't do anything restrictive in, in my mind. So it was just really being able to say, yep, yeah, it's just, okay, brain, we don't think like that anymore. And using that often, we don't think like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And I've used it in several other things too, um, in different parts of my life of, 
you know, when I'm on my cycling bike and I don't think I can push myself because of having the back issues that I've had, um, I, I'm able to say, you know what, Brian, we don't think like that anymore. Let's try it. If we can't do it, we can't do it, but right, let's try it. Right. So I think a couple of the really good takeaways is we will put the link to the podcast yeah, in the comments. Yeah, if anybody knows Corinne Crabtree from Losing 100 Pounds, totally tag her in this video. <laughs> right? Tell her we right. love her. And, yeah. um, She's she awesome. Told, she should be a podcast guest. She could be a podcast guest. She'd oh, be my really gosh. Good. She'd be a really great podcast yeah, guest. Yeah, she would be a super fun podcast guest. So, so we'll, knows her. we'll put the link to her podcast in the comments. We're also going to put a before picture of Trisha yeah. in the comments. But, you know, so just to kind of recap a little bit about the – um, you know, the, I don't know, a couple of the basics would be number one, the scale is not your enemy. The scale is just simply to collect data. Number two, you need to get rid of all of your old thoughts. Number three, the other thing that I liked what Trisha said was, you know, it was about, it was a why her why was to get healthy and to teach her daughter. I think sometimes when we set goals, you just set that goal, but what makes them even more powerful is when you put a why behind it. Why is it that you want to lose that weight? It's not just that you want to lose that weight. There's something else beyond it is the reason that you want to lose that weight. And so I think that mommy, it's mommy. the why, but then I also think that it's a, um, and I, the, the whole aspect of being happy where you are and just finding something to love about yourself, you know, even if it's the earrings that you're wearing that day or the color of your hair or, you know, your eyes or the red lips that you have, whatever it is, I think that finding something about loving yourself now and not waiting to love yourself until you're whatever, 20, 30, 10 pounds thinner, whatever that is. I think that when you do that, that that also sets that example and sets you up for success. So anyway, we're going to put the link to Corinne's podcast and Trisha's before picture in the um, links. And if you've had some success with weight loss or some tips that you can share with us, please do so. So before we go, public service announcement, she does cuss a lot. Oh yeah. So just right. as a heads up. Yeah, she does. Um, she does, you know, she needs that shirt that says I love Jesus, but I cuss a lot. <laughs> but I cuss a lot. That's right. So but she does. Yeah. Just as a heads up. Just as a heads up. Yeah. Podcast. But she's awesome. Awesome. All right, you guys. We'll see you soon. Have a good day. Bye.